Should you buy a bandsaw? No. Well, yeah. Well, I really guess it depends. So let's just get into it. My name is Eric Spensley, and if there's one thing in this world that I can reliably count on, it's getting countless messages from people every single time I get a new tool asking if they should buy it too. And this bandsaw is no different. Should I buy a bandsaw? Should I buy a bandsaw? Do I need a bandsaw? Should I buy a bandsaw? Certainly I shouldn't buy a bandsaw. I mean, not me, right? Now before I get into it, this video is not about whether or not you should buy this specific bandsaw. It's actually about whether or not you should just buy a bandsaw in general. And because of that, this video is not sponsored by anybody, and I'm not even gonna be mentioning any specifics to my particular bandsaw that I have. After using this bandsaw pretty heavily for a couple months now, I feel like I've been able to piece together some pretty decent buying advice that would be really helpful for anybody out there contemplating buying a bandsaw. And to make sure that I covered as many areas as possible, I pulled my Instagram audience and asked them for both the benefits and the drawbacks of having a bandsaw. But before I get started on that, I wanna know your thoughts. Do you think a bandsaw is an essential tool to have and who do you think should own one? Let me know down in the comments below. So first, let's start with the benefits of buying a bandsaw. The number one response that I got was about resawing material. And if you don't know what resawing is, it's basically cutting material in half like this. Now, do you need a bandsaw to do this? <laughs> Absolutely not. If your piece is small enough, you can very easily accomplish resawing on your table saw by just making a couple passes and slowly cutting through it. I'll start by taking one light pass, then I'll flip the board 180 degrees and take another light pass. After each pass, I'll raise the blade up just a little bit higher until I'm safely able to cut all the way through the board. The downside to this method is that on a 10 inch table saw, like most people have, you're limited to a piece that's right about six to seven inches tall. Not to mention that this cuts a little sketchy and if you're not really, really familiar and confident with the table saw, you might not want to do it. Plus, it's pretty time consuming. Even without a table saw, you definitely could still resaw lumber. You use a hand saw and that's probably something I'm never going to do, but it's possible. But why would you even want to resaw lumber in the first place? By resawing lumber, you're able to turn a board that's, let's say, about one inch thick into two approximately half inch thick pieces. And that's an instant way to basically double the stock that you have if your project can get away with thinner parts. The other daily double is there. <laughs> Another popular reason is called book matching, where the grain basically appears to mirror across two boards, which is a super popular technique for making really interesting drawer fronts. Oh, and before we get too far into it, go ahead and roast me on how awful this mobile stand looks. I had an accident. Goo! It's just the old drawers that I had underneath my workbench. It's not a permanent solution, so it's getting the job done just fine now until I build something permanent. Just figured I'd address that before everybody asks why this looks so terrible. The second most popular reason to buy a bandsaw is to make curved cuts. Now, bandsaws make curved cuts extremely easy. Depending on the size of the blade that you choose for your specific bandsaw, you can get really, really tight and intricate curves. Not to mention, since the blade is supported on both sides of the cut, it's very reliable for that blade to actually stay perpendicular to your cut. Now, before having a bandsaw, I did all of my cuts with a jigsaw, and it's a tool that gets a lot of hate, but honestly, I love jigsaws. They're really cheap, they're pretty portable, and honestly, if you only had a small amount of money, a really, really confined space, and you can only buy one saw, I'd probably tell you to get a jigsaw. But why do jigsaws get so much hate? I've noticed when a lot of people use the jigsaw, they push it really, really hard against their workpiece. That causes the blade to deflect, and then they get those cuts that are out of square, and that's a lot of what those complaints come from. The other common complaint I hear about using a jigsaw is that they tend to bounce or chatter a lot when you're making curved cuts. That has everything to do with the blade getting bound in the wood. Usually that happens when you're trying to make too tight of curves for the blade that you have, or you're just not making any relief cuts. The third most common answer I got about why people should own a bandsaw centers around people like me who utilize a lot of templates. 
Templating requires, well, making a template, then rough cutting the shape on the workpiece, and using a template bit to perfectly transfer the exact shape of the template to the workpiece itself. The bandsaw excels at this task because not only can it make curved cuts faster and more efficiently, it also doesn't require that you constantly clamp and reclamp your workpiece down to the bench. You can just run it through the bandsaw, no clamping required. Can you do the whole templating process without a bandsaw? Absolutely you can, it just takes a little longer. The fourth most common response I got for why someone would want to buy a bandsaw is because they can cut thicker material that a table saw just can't do. This 14 inch bandsaw can cut about seven inches in one pass. It's actually about six. You sit on a throne of lies. And you can get bigger bandsaws, like a 24 inch bandsaw that cuts up to like 17 inches all in one pass. Now that's one that I really can't refute all that well. A 10 inch table saw like most people have can only cut about three to three and a half inches all in one pass. And yes, I know they make those big giant sliding table saws that have like 12 and 14 inch blades, but still that gets absolutely nowhere close to the capacity that a bandsaw can do. However, you could absolutely make the cut in two passes, it's just not gonna be as clean. Again, another option would be using a handsaw to cut those insanely thick pieces and more power to you if you decide you wanna try that. The fifth most popular answer that I got about why you might wanna buy a bandsaw is for ripping rough materials. And I really can't agree with this one more. If you've ever run across the time where you're at the table saw ripping a piece of lumber and it starts to get really, really hard to push the piece of wood through, chances are that wood is squeezing on your riving knife super, super hard and that's wood tension. Now, just imagine what it would be like cutting that exact same piece of wood with all that tension in it if you didn't have a riving knife on your saw. Now, because the blade on the bandsaw travels downward, the worst case scenario is that your piece is gonna get pulled into the tabletop gets stuck and the blade just gets jammed. Compare that to the table saw, which has the blade spinning at you. And if something gets stuck, well, it's coming at you. Now I am not trying to scare you away from using your table saw and convince you to immediately go out and buy a bandsaw because you can very easily do the exact same thing with a cheap jigsaw. And honestly, a lot of times that's still what I prefer to do, even though I have the bandsaw. I guess I'm just a creature of habit because that's what I did for a really long time. And again, you could do the exact same thing with a handsaw, but I'm not doing that. The sixth most common benefit that I got about owning a bandsaw is for cutting really small parts like dowels. When you're working with really small parts, in general, it's a lot easier to bring the workpiece to the tool rather than bringing the tool to the workpiece. Now sure, you could absolutely cut a dowel on something like a table saw or a circular saw, but in my experience, they tend to just shoot off and you can't really get a good grip on them because of how small the pieces are. And the seventh most popular response I got was about cutting circles. Ah, uh, this is a bad visual aid. It's really the opposite is what you'd be cutting, not this. Now, tons of people will tell you that the bandsaw is the easiest way to cut circles. There are tons of simple jigs that you can make for the bandsaw that make cutting circles pretty quick and efficient. However, it's not the only way. Now, I personally use a router whenever I do mine, and I've actually seen some people do it on the table saw. Not to mention, I think Festool actually makes a specific attachment for their jigsaw that makes perfect circles, but you could probably just buy a table saw for the cost of that. After all seven of those benefits of having a bandsaw, it's probably leaning pretty hard towards buying one, right? Well, that's where I wanted to bring up all the drawbacks. And for that, again, I pulled my Instagram and Patreon audience to make sure that I covered all of those aspects. And speaking of Patreon supporters, I want to take a quick second to thank all these folks here. They're truly getting me one step closer to being able to quit my day job and pursue this channel as my full-time career. 
If you're interested in supporting me on that journey and you'd like to pick up one of these shirts here as well as a ton of other perks, consider checking out my Patreon page and see if it's right for you. I'll leave a link down to that in the description below. And as a reminder, there's absolutely zero pressure. So let's just get back to the bandsaw. The first most common drawback to having a bandsaw is changing the blades. If you're swapping out a blade that's the exact same size, there's really not that much of an issue. But the big problem comes when you're swapping out different sizes or different thicknesses of blades. That's where a bandsaw really slows you down. When you're swapping out blades of different thicknesses, you have to make sure that all the guides and everything supporting the blade are properly aligned. And while that's not an impossible task by any stretch, it's pretty time consuming. And if you're in the middle of a project and you have a really nice workflow going, that can pretty much kill your entire workflow. That's why you'll typically see a lot of larger shops have two or more bandsaws. One of those bandsaws typically has a thinner blade that's gonna be used for a lot of curve cuts, and the other bandsaw is gonna be set up with a thicker blade so they can resaw and roughly rip all of their material down. And by having two of those bandsaws, you don't have to go back and forth between constantly changing the blades and changing the settings on them. Wanna change the blade on your jigsaw? Done. Wanna change the blade on your table saw? Done. Wanna change the blade on your circular saw? Done. Now, out of all the tools that I've used, the bandsaw is by far the most time consuming tool to change the blades on. And speaking of time consuming, the second biggest drawback I've seen about a bandsaw is the setup process. On my bandsaw, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, different bearings that need to be perfectly aligned to the blade, not to mention the tension and the tracking that also need to be adjusted. You can very, very easily spend 15 to 20 minutes adjusting all those different settings every single time you have to change blades. And if that's not enough, there are very few tools out there that stir up as much debate as a bandsaw when we talk about how to properly set them up. As someone who is a brand new bandsaw user, I found it pretty intimidating and honestly kind of frustrating to sift through all of the conjecture about what's the proper and the best way to set up a bandsaw. And I just had to kind of figure it out and find what method works for me. Compare that to a jigsaw, which is basically just plug and play and the jigsaw is looking pretty handy to me. The third biggest drawback to having a massive bandsaw like this is obviously just the sheer amount of space that it takes up. There's absolutely no way you're gonna be able to put this away anywhere unless it's maybe in like a closet. And even a small unit like this weighs almost 175 pounds. If you get a larger bandsaw, some of those are 400 to 700 pounds. So you absolutely need some sort of a mobile base no matter how bad it looks. And as I said earlier, I do have a new mobile base design for this bandsaw and that's gonna come up in a future video. So ignore how awful this one looks. Now compare this giant footprint to this tiny footprint and I'd say a jigsaw is still looking pretty awesome if space is a premium for you and you need a ton of portability. The fourth most common drawback to having a bandsaw is the poor dust collection. This is one thing that is particular to this specific bandsaw. There's only one dust collection port and some other bandsaws actually have two dust collection ports. Either way, most bandsaws are notorious for still making a giant pile of sawdust on the table and just not clearing that dust very effectively. Compare that to a jigsaw. I'm kidding, jigsaws make a ridiculous amount of dust. Although I do think Festool makes one that has like a really good dust extraction on it, but again, I've never used it. The fifth most common drawback about having a bandsaw is that they require a lot of frequent calibration. After going through the whole process of getting the tracking set, the tension, and all those bearings dialed in absolutely perfect, just like any other tool, over time, things are gonna get slightly bumped out of place and you're gonna have to go back and calibrate it. And while that's not impossible to do, again, it just takes a lot of time. So after looking at all of both the benefits and the drawbacks of having a bandsaw, do I think you should buy one? 
Well, to help answer that question, let's separate it into a couple different segments of people. Say you're someone who has unlimited money, unlimited shop space, knows you'll probably get a fairly decent use out of it. In that case, I'd say, yeah, probably go ahead, buy one. You'll enjoy the efficiency and let's be honest, we all enjoy getting a new tool, buy away. Now I am certainly not in that bucket and I don't think the majority of the people watching this video are in that bucket either. So let's look at some other buckets. So let's say you're someone who has a smaller shop, maybe a one or two car garage, and you're either making your living or working on getting to the point where you can make a living from your woodworking. In that case, if you have the money saved up and you can budget it towards a machine and you know that you're gonna use it a ton, it's probably a good idea to pick something like this up if it'll fit in your workflow. Now I think those first two buckets seem like really obvious answers, so why don't we look at some that are maybe not so clear. So the next type of person I wanna look at is maybe somebody who's been woodworking for one to four years, really, really enjoys it, but either doesn't sell anything they make or sells a very small amount and makes very minimal money. This person might only get into the garage maybe once or twice a week and maybe is a weekend warrior. That kind of individual is probably more focused on just getting into the shop, having a good time and treating it more as a hobby than they do a business. In that case, if getting a new tool like a bandsaw is gonna make your hobby a lot more enjoyable to you, I think the call really comes down to whether or not you actually have the money to spend on it. However, if you don't already have the money budgeted towards buying the bandsaw, I probably wouldn't because in this case, you're probably only gonna touch it a couple times a month and it's probably not worth stretching yourself that far to get a tool that's not really making you any money. Again, that is 100% a personal decision, but that's just the way that I look at it. Going alongside that, if you are somebody who 100% does not have the money to buy the new tool, or really isn't sure if they're actually gonna get a lot of use out of it, I'd for sure skip buying a bandsaw. The reason that I say that is because there are tons of ways to accomplish the exact same thing that a bandsaw does with tons of other tools that's way cheaper. It just takes a little bit more time. I personally think that you'd be much better off saving all that money until you truly know that you need a bandsaw in your shop. The last bucket of people that I wanna focus on is somebody who's either brand new to woodworking or sees all these professional shops that are outfitted with all the latest and greatest tools and are completely overwhelmed by that and they think that they need all those tools. If you're a viewer who's in that bucket, then I 100% recommend that you do not buy a bandsaw. And the reason I say that is because at that stage, you don't know that you need a bandsaw, you think you need a bandsaw. My number one tip about buying tools is to only buy a tool when you know that you need the tool. I always tell people to try to come up with creative ways to get past all the blockages they have with the current tool set that they already own. And like I mentioned, I do not own a joiner, so I also needed a way to rip a nice, clean, straight edge on these boards. I've shown tons of different techniques in the past about how to accomplish this, like using your router table, but today I wanna to show you how to use a table saw. There are no fancy jigs that are needed here. Just take some double-sided tape and stick your board down to a sheet of plywood and then run it through the table saw. Only after consistently having to use all of those workarounds to get yourself through a project, do I think you should really start to look at a tool to replace those workaround methods that you already have. Because after you spend a fair amount of time with all those workarounds, you'll really start to internalize the value that that new tool could give you, and you'll truly understand whether or not you need the tool or if it's just a want. So to help illustrate what I mean when I say this, I wanna give you an example of something that I'm personally struggling with right now, and that's whether or not I should buy a CNC machine. Truthfully, the only thing I'd really use it for is to make all of my furniture templates. And while it definitely is gonna do it way faster and way more efficiently than I am going to be able to do by hand, I just don't think I can justify $2,000 for that alone. Sure, I do find that making templates by hand can be a little frustrating and really irritating, but I only do it like once, maybe twice a month, so I don't really think there's any point of me buying a CNC at this moment. I guess what I'm trying to say is that if you truly need a tool in your shop, you already know it. And if you're on the fence about buying something, chances are it's more of a want than it is a need. 
At least that's my philosophy and kind of the way that I look at buying tools. So I hoped all of this helped you decide whether or not a bandsaw is right for you and your shop. A bandsaw is a fantastic tool to have in your arsenal, however it does take up a lot of space and the setup can be a little bit daunting. But if you can get over some of those hurdles, having a bandsaw makes tons of tasks safer and more efficient, plus they're a blast to use. Thinking that maybe a bandsaw isn't right for you? Consider buying a jigsaw. It's the tool you love to hate. Terrible jokes aside, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that thumbs up button and let me know down in the comments below about what tool I should tackle next if I do another one of these videos. So I'll see you in the next one. The grills in my mouth double as a freeze rate. The grills in my mouth double as a freeze rate. The grills in my mouth double as a freeze